In the aftermath of what happened in Uvalde, there is a political reality and a political frustration for so many that typically plays out after tragic mass shootings such as the one that has affected South Texas. To break some of that down, we want to bring in John Taylor, who is a political science and geography professor, chair of the political science department at UTSA. John, we're always uh, glad that you're here with us and, and able to provide some insight. We want to start, though, with some of your own thoughts that you shared in an op-ed in the San Antonio Express News, really highlighting what a lot of people have taken to social media to, to talk about. The, the reality that there is almost a cycle that is predictable in the it's, aftermath it's of, of these shootings. Explain so, some of your thoughts there. Hell, it's a frustrating cycle. That's the problem. It's, it, and it's, and I'm not, I don't mean to sound so cynical, but it's almost wash, rinse, repeat, um, where you know this, this incident occurs, this event occurs, and everybody is upset. And then we rightly are concerned about the victims and the families, and those Im impacted immediately. And so we, you know, we end up gathering together with thoughts and prayers, with vigils, and then we start talking about policy, and then we start getting into arguments about policy, and then all of a sudden we end up with essentially a form of gridlock because we can't decide exactly how we're going to move forward. And then once we do move forward, it's really not moving forward until the next incident occurs, and we do it all over again. And that's what is frustrating, I think, to a lot of people not necessarily on the right or left, but every spectrum where we want to see some sort of policy change, some sort of action. And there have been a variety of, of, of suggestions, everything from, from limits, uh, limitations on ages for, for purchasing a, 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 a AR-15s to issues related to background checks, red flags to mental health issues. It's across the spectrum right now. And so, you know, you would hope that something might be accomplished this time. But, you know, we thought the same thing after Sandy Hook, after we, after we, after we saw in El Paso, what we saw, saw in Santa Fe. So it is a, a frustrating cycle. And talk about what the, the, the hearing yesterday highly emotional. You had parents talking, you had kids that were in those classrooms, at least one child that talked. Tony Gonzalez is the state, is, excuse me, the House representative, U.S. House representative from that district. Not too long ago, he voted down background checks and closing some loopholes. Uh, are you getting any inkling that any minds were changed in that Rayburn House committee meeting yesterday? One would hope, and I will use a... Uh an analogy from religion. One would hope we would see Damascus Road conversions for some. I, I don't think we're necessarily going to see that. Um, we'll see people who will give, you know, their best efforts. They'll talk about things, but then they'll, in the end, they'll back away and they'll move back to the positions they've always had. And unfortunately, that means that we will likely not move forward. Although the House just yesterday did pass pretty strong legislation, which I got to be blunt, is going to go nowhere in the U.S. Senate. And, and talk about that, the, the political reality of this, and maybe explain what happens with the information we saw in that testimony yesterday. Because we just showed Dr. Guerrero, who was the pediatrician in Uvalde, Lexi Rubio's parents, who her mother just, the, the plea that she was making for change and talking to other parents listening, saying, I can't imagine their pain until the next person does. I think that struck every parent who heard that, like you said, no matter their political affiliation. So all of this incredibly informative and emotional testimony was given yesterday. Then what happens with that information? I, I, again, I hate to be cynical, but as a political scientist, the realities are such that we are facing a, a very a, a very bad situation for the Democrats in terms of midterm election, which means they're going to try to do things as they did in 1994 to try to, to address the gun issue. Republicans are going to basically remind their voters that they right now are on the upswing that, you know, look, we support gun rights. We support Second Amendment rights um, and we're not going to budge on most of this stuff. So ultimately, again, I hate to sound so cynical, uh, but ultimately, even with the with the heart rendering and just absolutely just devastating testimony. And as a dad myself, it's just like, oh, my. God, to hear this, it is difficult as a political scientist to see many steps forward, at least at this time. 
Hey, talk, so, so John Cornyn, the Texas senator, in a bipartisan effort to bring something to the Senate, it, we kind of have an idea what they're heading towards there. On a state level, there's been a lot of calls for a special session. Instead, we're getting these special committees, and we'd like to report on exactly what's happening in these committees, but they're behind the closed doors. They're not publicly accessible. What does that say about a state-level commitment to doing something in the wake of what happened in Uvalde? Well, the governor would say, well, it's showing a commitment. Uh, Beto O'Rourke would say exactly the opposite. If we want to look at what's going on, we're talking about an executive session because it deals with both personnel issues and sensitive security issues. Now, security issues should not be in executive session. However, personnel issues under state law can be. And so the result is, is that's being used to kind of not necessarily shield, but definitely kind of at least minimize the public's ability to have input or impact this time. And let's be honest, a special committee session is not the same thing as a special session of the legislature. The governor has been reticent, in fact, he's pretty much refusing to call a special session regarding, regarding guns and, and gun reform. Um, and so the result is whatever this committee does, it can make recommendations, much like what the lieutenant governor and the speaker already have with charges to various committees. But it may or may not result in legislation come January. So to be clear, what can come out of this special legislative committee is recommendations. It is not legislation that could affect any portion of an upcoming school year. Uh, agree completely. Absolutely. 100 percent correct. The only way that anything could change is if TEA and the governor got involved and issued an executive order. I want to talk about momentum. We've, we've talked so much. I mean, I, I the Sunday the president was in Uvalde. I was at the town square park. There were a lot of young 10 and 11 year olds holding up signs asking that rules be changed and their in their words, rules be changed. It felt like there was momentum for something to be done. It does feel like there is more momentum this time than there has been in the past. And, and I'm trying to figure out if, John, that's because we're so close to this incident. Or do you think there's yeah. real momentum that we're going to get some bipartisan agreement here? One would think there is momentum just because but we're also close to it. I mean, I also I keep I go back to my background. I had two friends who died in the Oklahoma City bombing. And so after that, it was the same kind of thing in terms of the focus on what can we do to reform? What can we do to address the issues that led to domestic terrorism? And some things did happen, but not in the same way as we're talking about mass shootings. We seem to have this inability to address it in any meaningful way. And until that changes, we're going to continue to do wash, rinse, repeat on these incidents. As frustrating as that is, uh, this conversation has been informative. So, Professor John Taylor from UTSA, thanks so much, as always, for being here. Pleasure. All right. Thank you, John.